What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super awesome wavy American flags. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I got four eight foot two by fours and I'm gonna cut eight pieces at 37 inches. All right, so now that we got all these cut, we're gonna go ahead and rip them all in half. So we're gonna rip them at an inch and three quarter. All right, so now that we got these ripped down, I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna go through and lay it a really nice bead of glue between each one of these. And the way that we're gonna have them is I'm gonna have the rounded side go on the back. So all of the front will be the cut pieces. Then once I get those glued, I'm gonna take my square and I'm just gonna do my best to square it up. And I'm gonna throw a clamp on either side and then in the middle, and don't be afraid to put too much glue on these because the whole face of it, we're gonna be pretty much sanding and grinding it down. So if you got glue coming out the front, don't worry about it. And then as you can see, I got a piece of MDF down here that I'm gonna put these on so that I'm not worried about glue getting on the workbench. And then once we got these glued and clamped, I'm gonna set them down on the floor and I'm gonna put, uh, I got some five gallon buckets that are full of paint. And then I got some other heavy things that I'm gonna put on it just so that it will dry up as flat as possible. Sometimes when you have things glued and clamped, it'll try to cup on you. So we're gonna try and prevent that. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued and clamped and we'll go from there. All right, so next up we're gonna be moving on to the messy part of it. So to do this, I have a grinder here and I got this cuts all shaping disc. Uh, this is the coarse one and it has the rounded edges on it. And this is gonna be super messy, but from my testing, this was the easiest way to do it. So this is the way I'm gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just gonna mark out my waves so that I have somewhat of a guide to follow and that I can make sure I can uh, evenly space them out. So I'm gonna have mine start uh, at the top over here and I'm gonna go diagonal this way. So it'll be similar to this test one that I did. Uh, they might be a little bit different. I might take out more and then kind of have them work up and then have a more of a sharper edge whereas these ones kind of just roll but obviously you can do them however you'd like to and then once i got it as close as i can get it with this thing here then i'm going to switch over to my orbital sander i got like some 40 grit on here and i'll just be using that and then some just some sandpaper and just do it handheld and just try and get it as smooth as i can and as you can see, I got my handle on my grinder. Just make sure you got a good grip. Uh, I'm not too worried about this thing moving around when I'm doing it. If you're worried about it moving around, just go ahead and clamp it just so that you can get both hands on your grinder. Uh, make sure you're super careful and uh, use these at your own risk. But I didn't seem to have any problems with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this marked out and we'll start to get these waves going.
And then as you can see, I got this little uh, wooden wall thingy right here. And that is just to try and help with some of the dust because uh, this thing is really dusty. So make sure you got a respirator on. And uh, if you want to throw up something like this, then feel free to. It'll just kind of help contain it a little bit. But I'm just going to show you real quick how this thing works. All right, so I just got done with the sanding and I think we're looking pretty good, looking pretty smooth. So the next two things that I'm gonna do are optional. I'm gonna flip it over onto its face and then I'm gonna take my square and I'm just gonna square off either side and just cut just an eighth inch off just because all my boards didn't line up perfect. There's just a little bit of uh, steps going on. So all I'm gonna do is just cut off just enough to where it's perfectly square in a straight line. And that's just gonna help with my frame to make sure it lines up. But like I said, if you don't wanna do this, you don't have to. Your boards might have lined up better than mine so they might not need it. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is take my grinder again and I'm just gonna go through and just clean up some of this glue here. It's gonna be on the back of the flag anyway so nobody's ever really gonna see it. But I just wanna clean it up just so that it's not all bumpy and everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get these sides cut and clean up this back real quick. So I got those sides cut down and I got that back cleaned up. It doesn't make a huge difference and there's a little bit of texture to it. I don't know if you can see that there, but I think it looks a lot better than just having the glue all over the back and it doesn't take long. So now we're gonna get it flipped back over and what we're gonna be doing next is torching it. So what I did with my other one is I tried to torch it almost to help out with giving it some depth. I'll just show you real quick. So as you can see, I torched inside the lower spots and then that almost makes it look as if it's darker in there with more shadow so i'm going to do that the same on this one and then the rest of it i'll just lightly torch it just to help the grain show through but let's just go ahead and get this thing torched All right, so now that we got that all torched, next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my stencil and then what I'm gonna do is just push it in there as best I can so that it's tight to the wood and then I'm gonna mark it out and it is gonna be a wavy flag so if it's not perfectly straight and if it's not perfectly lined up, you're really not gonna notice. And I will say that the, uh, the smooth wavy flag it is easier with this. So we're gonna put it, push it in there as best we can. We're gonna mark that line. And then once we got that union marked, I'm gonna take my frog tape here. It's the 1.88 inch frog tape. You don't need the size frog tape. This is just the one I use. 
So we're gonna tape off that line as best we can. We're gonna tape off on the inside of it, and then we're gonna tape off along the uh, seventh board down. Then we'll tape it over to wherever that line ends. So that will be uh, taping off the union. Then I'm gonna go through and tape off all the white stripes. So that'll be every other one starting from the second from the top. That'll be six total. And then the ones up top, obviously you're only gonna tape off the part of it that's not in the union. And then once we got those taped off, then we are gonna go ahead and move on to the staining. And same with the union. This one is probably gonna be harder than the smooth wavy one because we're gonna be taping down all these hard edges. So just keep that in mind if you want it to be maybe a little bit simpler and you don't know which one to do. That one might be a little bit easier, but I'm gonna go ahead, get the union taped off, get the white stripes taped off, and we will be ready to stain. And then one more thing real quick that I forgot to mention. So these stripes should be an inch and a half, and then with the 1.8 inch tape, what I do is just pull out a long enough piece, and then I'll just, I'll tape it to something, and then I'll pull it all the way out, and then I'll just cut it in half with my razor, and then I'll have two straight edges, so I'll just put one on either side of the stripe and then it'll overlap in the middle. So then that way I'm not wasting a bunch of tape. But if you get one of the other sizes, it should just be small enough to where you can just tape off on either side of it and it should just overlap in the middle. And then uh, that way it'll make it easy and then you'll have two straight lines. So that way you're not trying to cut along stripes or something like that. All right, so as you can see, I got the union taped off. I got all the white stripes taped off. Uh, it is a little bit tricky taping off along these ridges, but you just gotta do your best to work around it. And like I said before, with it being a wavy flag, if it's not perfectly straight and if it's not perfectly lined up, it'll still look good. And then as you can see, I got this, they overlap right in the middle there. But now we are all ready for the stain. So for the red stain, I got some Scarlet. Uh, this is Minwax water-based wood stain, and it's the clear tint base. And then for the blue, I got some Varathane water-based wood stain. This is also clear tint base, and this stuff is tinted in navy blue. And then for this flag, I'm not gonna be staining uh, the white one's white. I'm just gonna leave those wood color. And then I'll just be using a rag to stain. I usually do around three coats of the red and three coats of the blue also. And then after I'm done staining the red, uh, I'm actually gonna spray some of this, uh, some of this 2X Ultra Cover uh, Gloss Sealer. I'll spray that on the red after it's dry before I pull the tape. And then that way, it'll make it a lot easier to tape to it when I tape off for the Union. So after I'm done staining and after it's dry, I'll just spray a coat on that, cover up the union before you spray the coat, and then I'll just pull the tape off and then I will let that dry. And then after that's done, then I'll tape off for the union and get that stained. So let's go ahead and get it stained up.
All right, so now that we're done with the staining, the next thing that we're gonna do so I'm gonna take my stencil and we're just gonna do our best to mark this out on there. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult with the waves. We're just gonna do the best we can. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a pencil to mark them out, but let's go ahead and get these marked out. All right, so I got those all marked out. And the next thing that we're gonna do is just get to carving them. So for mine, I'm just gonna use my Dremel 3000 with my flex shaft attachment. Uh, I got a little dust blower on the end there, which just helps to keep your space more clean. And I'm gonna be using a number 106 to outline them, and I'm gonna use the 107 to clean out the middles of them. And when I do this, I keep my Dremel at full speed. And I don't go super deep, I pretty much just take off the color so uh, you don't have to go super deep with them because once you start to get too deep it makes it hard to try and make a nice like flat surface so just enough to take off the color All right, so now that we got those carved out, I'm gonna go ahead and just torch over these a little bit just to make them match the stripes a little bit better. And then once we're done with that, we can take our sealer again and we can spray a nice even coat over the whole thing. All right, so for this one, uh, if you like the white stain look better, all I did was just after the red stripes were dry and after I'd sealed them, I just taped them off and then I just went through and did the same thing with the white stripes. Usually I'll do around four coats of the white stain. It does dry up quite a bit, so it takes a bit more for it to show through as much. Uh, and that's just white stain. This is also in the Varathane water-based wood stain. It's the tintable base. And I just got my stars carved out on this one. And, and because I stained these stripes white, I'm also gonna put a coat of white stain on the stars. And the way I do that is just with these mini paint brushes here. I'll just take one of these and then I'll just dip it in the stain and go through and just put a coat of that onto the stars and then that way they have a little bit of a whiter look and they will match the stripes a little bit better. Uh, personally, I think I like the whiter look better. I just wanted to do it two different ways, uh, maybe to help you guys figure out what you guys would like better. But for me, I do like the look of the white stain on the stripes and on the stars. And I think I like this uh, this rounded look better also and it was easier too. So that's something to keep in mind uh, If you prefer one over the other style or color uh, Let me know in the comments. I'm kind of interested to see whether you guys like the White stain or the just the wood color and whether you like this rounded look better or whether you like the more rigid look that the other one has on it but we're gonna go ahead, get these stars, get a coat of stain on these stars. And uh, then after that's done, I'm just gonna seal this whole flag as well. And then once that sealer's on there, the only thing we'll have left is the frame and the hangers.
All right, so now that we got that all sealed up, for the frame, I'm gonna be using some one by three and I'll just cut it down so that the top and the bottom pieces will be long and then they will overlap the side pieces. And I'm just gonna be spray painting mine black. Obviously you can uh, stain them or torch them or do whatever you'd like, but I'm just gonna go ahead, get those cut and painted. And then to put them on, I'll just be using my uh, 18 gauge brad nailer. I got some inch and a quarter nails. Uh, if you have longer nails, feel free to use those because they got plenty of wood to nail into. And I am gonna have to clamp it down before I nail it because it does have quite a bit of a bow to it. So I'll probably just hold it right up against the edge of the table and then clamp it down and then just get it as flat as I can. But I'll go ahead, get those cut and put on there and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so now we got that frame put on there. Uh, if you couldn't tell in the video, what I did was just measured all the pieces, then I cut them, paint them, and then I just set them up around it. And then I nailed all of the frame pieces together. And then I did my best to uh, center it on there. If you had any gaps on any of the sides, uh, get it centered as best you can. And then I just clamped it down and as you can see that it straightened out pretty nicely. This one was pretty twisted also, but uh, as you can see, got it straightened out pretty nice. And now that we got that put on there, we can go ahead, get it flipped over. And for mine, I'm gonna be using these large D-ring hangers. And the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have a 32 inch gap between them. And then that way the flag can be hung using the studs. So yours will probably be super close, but mine was 38 and 3 eighths all the way across. So in order to have the 32 inch gap, I'm gonna be going uh, roughly three and one eighths off of either side. Or another way you could do it is just measure uh, three and an eighth, and then you could just measure 32 inches off of that and it'll be super close to being centered on either side. And then I'll just be putting these in the second to the top stripe. Uh, if you want a little bit of a better hanger, they do sell uh, French cleat hangers on Amazon. And then that way you can just screw that to the back of your flag and then screw it to the wall and then it should just kind of click into there. But I'm just gonna be using these since I already have them. And then in order to make sure that it doesn't sit at an angle when it's on the wall, since these will be on top, I might just screw some screws into the two bottom corners and then leave them out just a little bit enough to even that out. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these put on. All right, so that is what they look like all finished up. As you can see, they got a nice reveal going down the side. And like I said before, uh, comment down below which color you like and also whether you like the rounded ones or the more rough ones. Uh, personally, I like the white and I like the rounded look. Uh, I'll go ahead and link everything that I used to make these in the description. Uh, if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'd love to hear any video recommendations that you guys might have. Uh, I want to thank everyone for all of the nice comments and feedback that you guys leave me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you everyone so much for watching and please have a great day. Yeah.